Okay, everyone, it's another episode of On the Wrist from Off the Cuff to have a really cool review for you from the brand Boulder Supply Company based out of Singapore and Malaysia. Uh, they manufacture watches uh, and gear that are super tough, stylish, yet functional, and always ready for adventure. Now, this particular type of watch actually falls in a couple of different genres. Number one, you have, of course, a chronograph um, and some key common characteristics in sign language when you're looking at a chronograph. Of course, you're going to want that external uh, set of external pushers to activate timing functions. You'll see multiple subdials to measure elapsed time, often featuring additional scales based on the dependent subgenre. Uh, and this subgenre is actually motorsports, which is great. And even because of the movement that's uh, being used here, which is a Seiko Instruments VK Mecha Quartz. Uh, it also falls within that kind of Mecha Quartz boom, uh, where Michael Brands have been putting out some really fun timepieces uh, using these really interesting movements from Seiko, often selling them for upwards of $500. Here, you're actually getting an extremely good deal at just $299, and not only does it cost just $299, you're getting a... Um, a actual blacked out uh, titanium watch. So it's as a titanium case, PVD finish, 200 meters of water resistance, that's wild. So just wildly overbuilt, over capable. And this watch was actually born out of a really cool set of field watches, uh, you know, within the Venture line. This is known as the Venture Rally SRW. And it is a super tough and lightweight titanium chronograph with a tachymeter to measure speed per hour over a fixed distance. Uh, or the distance traveled over a known amount of time. And SRW stands for Sophie Rose Wells, the firstborn daughter of rally driver Daniel Wells. Uh, so with that, thanks to Boulder for sending this uh, loaner out for me to share with you guys. Um, once again, you know, it, however I get these models really doesn't uh, dictate anything in terms of my opinions. I'm always going to kind of share my honest thoughts, uh, regardless of how these watches make their way to the channel, whether they're just loaned in, lent in, or sent in. So with that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get these pieces in hand, and take a closer look. Okay, hey guys, uh, Boulder, speaking of Boulder, did you know that they make pocket knives? Check that out. Some nice walk and talk on that. Beautiful. So if you haven't, if you're not a fan of the channel and this is your first time checking it out, hopefully you're not too afraid of knives. But I will say M390 steel in a modern slip joint, it is pretty impressive. And yeah, Boulder made this. So it's just something to think about. Uh, check out this watch. Very, very handsome. I love the colorway. It actually kind of reminds me of something that, uh, you know, maybe you would see from, gosh, uh, the name is escaping me. There's a very hugely successful watch modder uh, who basically, um, makes his own watches at this point. It's not just modding and doing special. Look at that. Ooh. It'll come to me, uh, the name, as we go through this. But let's go through some of the specs here, guys. Only 38 millimeters in diameter. Fantastic. 12.2 millimeters thin. Very thin, especially for a chronograph. It might only seem a bit thick just because of... The fact that it's actually so short lug to lug, it's not stretching that plane out. Only 44 millimeters, very, very small lug to lug. So this is gonna be something that's gonna fit a lot of wrists really, really well. Um, it is titanium with a black PVD finish. It has a flat sapphire crystal with inner AR coating. You are getting a screw down crown that's signed at three o'clock. And inside here, you're gonna have a Seiko Instruments VK64 movement. Whew. Very nice, and I've done so many videos on Mecha Quartz watches. Basically, all the timing functions are run by Quartz. Uh, when it comes to the chronograph function, it's actually just a manual gear train. So this isn't a button that uh, goes to, you know, uh, setting off some type of electrical signal telling anything what to happen. It's a mechanical pusher. So the engagement is just so much better, so much more tactile. 
again because it is mechanical so there's a mechanical gear train very similar that to what you would get um, inside of a traditional chronograph uh, again though this isn't some super high-end expensive movement but it is quite innovative and a whole lot of fun now getting into some more of these details uh, you're getting of course this beautiful matte black dial printed indices painted hands there's no date which is great uh it uses japanese super loom that does glow blue and it, again it has an extreme amount of water resistance at uh 200 meters or 20 atmospheres 20 millimeter lug width so if you don't like it on this strap you can change it out um and uh yeah, this thing is pretty awesome. It's provided with a really nice nylon NATO style strap with titanium hardware and of course a matching black PVD hard coat finish on there. So uh, with that said, let's actually get this piece on wrist and see how it wears. Okay guys, check it out. Even on my seven and a half inch wrist, this thing wears absolutely beautifully, not undersized at all and a lot of that has to do with that strap right getting that extra hardware does help elongate the visual weight there so it's still really nice even though it is beautifully centered on the wrist even if i get it really close to the camera there and it's gonna kind of distort your perception in terms of the size of this so what i'll do is i'll rest my wrist nice and low and tighten up the frame here just so you guys can get a detailed look while still getting a bit of a truer aspect ratio on just how centered this thing sits on my seven and a half inch wrist. And I don't have a particularly flat, you know, wide and flat wrist by any means. It's actually quite round if you take a look at that. Um, so it's not like I have, you know, some advantage uh, with a big wide canvas for many types of watches. I'm also, you know, struggling to find stuff that still fits the right way or something that uh, doesn't appear too undersized or oversized and kind of finding that balance. But you guys can see this works really great uh, even adding that extra bit of material between the case back um, and uh, you know my wrist it still sits really well and is very very comfortable and a lot of has to do of course with the titanium construction the really small silhouette and again just those smart ergonomics in terms of the angles and the way everything sits it's just really well done and I'm still trying to think Man, he's great. The the colorway that this reminds me of uh, in terms of their style. Gosh, it's really going to bother me. He's on about effing time. He's one of the great three hosts there. Um, and it's really killing me that off the top of my head, uh, I can't uh, I can't remember his name. I'm just going to keep thinking, though. I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to look on my phone. I'm not going to look on my computer. I'm going to continue to think about it because he deserves for me to remember his name. Uh, so with that said, let's actually get this piece off the wrist, set up for some loom shots, low light transition, and closing thoughts. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the lights here. Check that out. Not that a you know, rally chronograph needs a lot of loom, but you know, in typical boulder fashion, they just overperform. That is just so cool looking. Guys, check this out. One thing I always like to work in, of course, is a bit of a low light transition because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're going to find yourself coming in and out of buildings, walking underneath overhangs, or just hanging out underneath the shade of a tree. So it is nice to see what these colors, textures, and finishes render like in less than optimal lighting to maybe include some harsh lighting to where you might expose any types of factory defects. But all you're going to see here is really sharply executed uh, details. My gosh, really cool. I mean, I'm blown away by the price, guys. And Boulder is not some no-name brand. Like, they've built a name for themselves. They probably could charge more for this watch, but I just really enjoy that they do make a, an effort to have options that are quite affordable. So beautifully done, and you can see still quite legible even in partially lit situations. And the color scheme reminds me of a Bamford design. Yes, uh, George Bamford was the name I was trying to remember. And uh, yeah, if you're watching this, George, I'm sorry it took me so long to remember. 
I'm a big fan of what you do. <laughs> um, uh, even outside of the, everything he's done within the watch community, uh, you know, as just a part of that ensemble uh, cast of About Effing Time, that podcast is amazing. I highly recommend them if you haven't been watching them. But yes, this colorway... Um, it just reminds me of something that they would do. Uh, I would say they as in Bamford, not about effing time. Um, and yeah, and that's a good thing. Uh, I think it looks fantastic. I don't think it's just like some direct homage uh, territory or anything like that. But it just has that level of coolness, uh, that kind of uh, monochromatic blacked out, but then that punch of color. It reminds you of like Tron, right? Like that is very very cool and i like that tron is probably a really good way to put it right it's it's all blacked out but then with some like bright neon lights so uh closing thoughts guys on the wrist this classic mid-size feel is great and it is super lightweight which is another plus in terms of something that you can wear and wear pretty free and fun um and then in terms of model variants there's various dial options in automatic and chronograph configurations within in this venture line so if you like this case profile hey there's actually quite a few other options there that aren't even most of them aren't even chronographed so check the site links for options and availability and of course you can check out this model um and that's what the link i'll leave uh there but you can dig around boulder site if you guys want to see more in terms of comparable models i'd say it's kind of tough to compare this um, in the chronograph variation because there are already so many motorsports themed mecha quartz models that really get by without anything close to this level of robustness and durability, right? Like there are ones that cost 500 plus dollars um, that are just going to have steel cases and uh, simple brushing, you know, finishing and stuff like that, or even a blasted finish versus being in titanium and then also being DLC coated, right? So, uh, and then also this has 200 meters of water resistance and screw down a crown, like that is just mind blowing. Um, and they didn't even upcharge anything right like that's what makes it even better uh so yeah there's a lot of uh i'd say competing chronographs you know mecha quartz chronographs within this space that that aren't doing half of what boulder has done here so uh if you like the aesthetic then you'll be pretty happy with that kind of value proposition um uh, whatever, whatever ratios you're going to be measuring it by so uh, bottom line for me guys, this is an awesome mashup of two different genres that really come together like very, you know, it just it comes together in a way that feels very cohesive and it makes it feel very purposeful as a timepiece. So yeah, although this is like a watch case that was built to be this cool, modern, compact field case, you know, field watch case. Man, does it just feel at home, like even the shape, this profile with not necessarily the hooded lugs, but the boxed lugs, um, that is something that is actually, you know, has history within the motorsports space. There are, you know, chronographs from the 70s that have a similar shape and silhouette. So it's really interesting that they were able to just kind of pivot and uh, give you something uh, that still feels, again, very thought out and cohesive. Um, but even though it's it's kind of just another variation of something else that they did that was really great. So with that said, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like the video, please do a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.